Hi, I'm Rob. I'm Simon. And we're from Don Broco, and this is Stories Behind the Songs. This came about, this is like one of the, I guess, weirdest kind of feelings I've felt in a long time. Um, just a very bizarre night where I was completely like out of it. Um, been chatting to this girl, super hot, absolute racist. Um, and when that dawn, when that sort of came, when I realised that after, it took me maybe like a few minutes of talking to her thinking, wow, she's still really hot. Like, I should probably still try and get with her. But then you kind of, you know, being in your drunken state, you're like, you're kind of, you're just battling these kind of morals within you. And like, she was an absolute piece of work. Um, I'm glad I didn't. But it was, it was just this crazy scenario. I'd never been in myself, so. Um, I remember getting back the next day thinking, what the hell happened that night? Who the hell was I talking to? That was crazy. I need to write a song about this. And uh, Simon came to me with the riff, felt pretty punchy. I was like, this, this is the song where I'm going to tell this story. Yeah. The video is fun. The video is fun. So uh, we did a video for the song Before Pretty, um, a video for our song Everybody. We met this guy in America called Ben Roberts from a production company called Dominar. Just randomly uh, they pitched a treatment for everybody we liked it went and did it loved him loved them and as soon as we were doing another video we asked him to write a treatment it was the first thing he came up with it was instantly like as bonkers as we could have hoped and um, we knew it'd be off the wall we asked him to do something that would freak people out we said we wanted people to be shocked potentially upset <laughs> or just love it as long as it conjured one of those three reactions. He nailed it. We were in a good place, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's what he came up with. Uh, and yeah, I mean, he takes all the credit for the uh, the actual kind of creative direction behind that video. Somehow um, we got it passed through the Somehow label. the label were keen. I don't know how, but um, thank you guys. Yeah, cheers guys. It was actually about um, a time, basically the, the probably the most stressful period of our career I'd probably say so far where we were just about to release uh, Automatic and we had all these kind of things that had been building up for so long. Uh, the, la the label we were with at the time was sort of making, pulling us in these different directions and um, yeah it felt we were very kind of overloaded and very just overstressed and overworked on that particular, it was like just a month of craziness before a release where we were like there's no way we can do all this stuff you're asking of us. Um, we didn't want to let anyone down, so we agreed to do it, doing all of it. And it was the first time in our career as a band that we were like, wow, this isn't actually that fun. Like, we should be enjoying being in a band. You should be enjoying getting to come to festivals and doing cool stuff. That's why we're in it. And it was like, wow, this, this isn't fun anymore. It's the first time it would ever happen. It was really kind of weird. Um, and it, it was the first time it kind of put this real strain on the band internally as well. Um, and with most kind of bad things that happen to us or me as a person, I like, I remember it, I write about it, and then I try and hope that at least something good can come out of it and have a song to sort of explain it all. Yeah. Um, normally, there's one person in a band who's like, fuck this, that was a shit show, or fuck this, I'm bored of this phase or something like that. And then you've got all the other members being like, come on, like, chin up. Um, that was the first point in our career where there were like a few of us. More than one person. More than one like, person wow, we were like, bad, yeah. this is bad. And that's the point where you need to rely on each other. That's what, I mean, that's the amazing thing about being in a band compared to say being a solo artist where you've got, you know, that weight on your shoulders just for yourself. You know, you're a band, you're a team, you've got your mates to, to sort of, you know, pull you up when you're feeling, feeling low. But when you're all in that low place, it's like, where do you turn to? That's kind of what the song's about. Um, it's pretty scary because always, yeah, especially in a band, there's always one of you who will be the positive reinforcement. Like if stuff's going bad, it's all be like, don't worry, it's fine, this is good. But when and there's no one, to when no that. one does that, that's really scary. That's almost but, more scary than the darkness that you're going through. It's like, oh wow, where's the, where's the guy that's normally like, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> but you, I mean, it's like anything, you know, if you can get through it and sort of, you know, get out the other side, you'll be stronger because of you're it. You're so much stronger because of it. And now. If something happened again like that, it probably wouldn't even phase us because it's like, well, it's fine. Yeah. Nerve. Yeah. I mean, that was that was a, a kind of special song for us in the sense it was the last song we wrote for the album for Automatic, and it's probably our favourite song, well, one of our favourite songs on Automatic. It felt like a real kind of different 
different side of Don Broco that we'd ever put out before. Definitely gave the album a nice kind of, you know, kind of all-rounding feel. And it was the only song as well that we didn't really know what it was going to sound like until we got the mix back. So yeah, we kind of had a few different incarnations, didn't really know what it was going to sound like and then got the first mix and we were like, wow, this is, this is a cool tune. It went through so many different incarnations in pre-production. We did like three different versions of that song, which had really different stylistic vibes, even though like the melodies might have been the same and like chord it would be the same, but it would sound like a different song. And then when it actually came to the crux of it, the, uh, the producer we were using at the time, he was a very free flowing, like don't worry dudes, it'll work itself out, which isn't the way we work. Um, but fair play, it did work itself out, but we only actually saw the final incarnation in its kind of fully realised form when the mix came through, because the mix made such a drastic difference to that kind of finishing off of the song. Normally we don't have to wait for a mix to feel what the song's going to be like, but this one was like, oh wow, that's like, that's a journey. Yeah. Mm.